Hey everyone, today is Wednesday, July 27th. The time is 4.45 p.m. and the temperature is around 25 degrees Celsius. And that's a look south down Lower Jarvis Street. And there's a look north up Jarvis. And for this one, I'll be heading north all the way up to Bloor Street East. And then from there, I think I'll walk west over to Bloor Young Station. And right in front of me there is the St. Lawrence Market. And the St. Lawrence Market dates back to 1902. And at one point, it even served as City Hall. And just in front of me is Front Street East. There's that neat pedestrian bridge where I started recording this from that connects the St. Lawrence Market over to this condominium. And I'll be revisiting Jarvis Street, or at least this stretch of Jarvis Street, since the last walk I did back in October of 2021. And I titled that Downtown's Ugly But Beautiful Jarvis Street. And I think that title drew a lot of different reactions from people. There's a look at the Northern St. Lawrence Market the newly reconstructed Northern St. Lawrence Market. It looks like they have the roof element up in place. And we'll take a look back towards the St. Lawrence Market. And a view directly into the sun, but there's the Flatiron Building off in the distance and the financial district behind it. I'm just going to head over to the east side of Jarvis. South of Front Street, is, it is called Lower Jarvis from here down to the lake. But it's just good old Jarvis Street, north of Front Street. And this is the east side of downtown. Here's a pretty neat store. It's called the Flatirons Christmas Market, and that has been here since 1986. And this is King Street East coming up. There's the old St. Lawrence Hall. And I got to walk through there, along with part of the St. Lawrence Market as part of Doors Open. And there's a 503 Kingston Road streetcar. Normally it's the 504 King streetcar that you see here. I always kind of like this view, right towards the financial district. This is the Daniel Brook building on the right. And that dates back to 1849. 
There's a park that leads over to the St. James Cathedral. And if it weren't for all the leaves on the trees, we'd have a pretty killer view of the skyline. And this will be Adelaide Street East coming up. Looks like I'll have to hightail it to get across here. So to me, at least, the northern part of Jarvis, at least when I walked through here last year, was somewhat on the ugly side. There's a lot of older, nice mansions and estates in that end of town. But at the same time, it kind of looks like a hodgepodge of different buildings and derelict lots doesn't really have a cohesive feel to it here is Richmond Street East and I don't think I'll get to cross here Richmond is a one-way street with westbound traffic. And there's one of the remaining downtown gas stations. Maybe I'll cross over to the west side of Jarvis here. Richmond here will lead you west right through the financial district and then it'll take you through the entertainment district. What are you doing? Yeah, I learned how to drive. That guy just struck her car. <laughs> That was fun. And here is Queen Street East coming up. Now on the right side of Jarvis here is the Moss Park neighborhood. something interesting here north of Queen. And that is this reversible center lane. I hope I zoomed in on it, but those signs in the middle there will be a green arrow and you can go straight 
and a red X when that lane is closed off to northbound traffic. Okay, and that center lane caters to northbound traffic between 3.45 p.m. and 6.30 p.m. And that's Monday to Friday, and all other times it serves southbound traffic. And right across the street there is the Moss Park Armory. That's operated by the Canadian Armed Forces and several different regiments serve out of there. I think it's all reserve units. And coming up is Shooter Street. I walked along here last week filming a, a video, I think. When did I do that? That might have been on Sunday, actually. So earlier this week, uh, someone on an e-bike whizzes by on the sidewalk. Around the corner here, Hyatt Place and Residences Hotel is going up. Although a few years ago, that was a parking lot and it's been a parking lot for quite a while. And Shooter Street terminates at the Eaton Center just to the west there. It's kind of an interesting design on the outside of that Hyatt. This reversible bike lane was actually removed in 2009 and bike lanes were added. But then Mayor Rob Ford took over and killed the bike lanes and reinstated the reversible center lane. Fortunately, bike lanes popped up shortly after on Sherburn Street, which is just to the east of here. There is the site of the former Grand Hotel. That was a 50 story, or that will be a 50 story condo. But that was originally built for the RCMP, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, and it later became the Grand Hotel. And recently it's been torn down to make way for a new hotel, or I don't know if it'll be a new hotel, but at least a new condo. And this is Dundas Street coming up, and this whole area has been gentrifying quite heavily lately. I like privacy. There's been a lot of new condos going up. So here's Dundas, and just to the west of here, you'll find Dundas Square.
she was just talking about trying to book a flight to Amsterdam and all the seats were full. I wonder if that coincided with the flight I was able to book to Amsterdam. And I'll be leaving for that in about five days from now. And this ugly looking building here takes the shape of an inverted pyramid and that was built back in 1971. It was previously home to Sears Canada. And right behind it is an old merchandise warehouse. I'm not sure who their current tenants are. But they've added this big glass facing to it. That kind of Brightens up the facade a bit. And there's a lot of older homes like this on the north end of the east side of downtown. And there is the Inglewood Arms. And on the left, we have the Ryerson University, or I guess Toronto Metropolitan University, International Living and Learning Center. There's the Ontario Court of Justice. I think what throws Jarvis Street off for me is just how wide it is. It doesn't really have the kind of scale you'd like to see on a downtown street. There's the Econo Large, large <laughs> Econo Lodge. I think I mispronounced a word in a similar fashion in the last one I recorded just before this. That's a solid three stars on TripAdvisor. I tried to search for a room there and it doesn't matter what dates you pick, it is completely sold out. So I think it is still functioning as a shelter. A lot of hotels in the city have been doubling as shelters during the pandemic and even into this post-pandemic world. There is the infamous Booker Harvey's. And that's an institution in this neighborhood, so much so that if you type Poker Harvey's into Google Maps, it'll actually populate with this location. And 
And just over there is the Allen Gardens. In fact, this entire district is known as the Garden District. And I'm guessing whatever development is going up here is going to have to incorporate at least the facade of this building. Looks like they have a 25-story building plan for that lot. And this is kind of what I meant by saying Jarvis was a bit on the ugly side. There's really no cohesive street feel to it. it just seems like a random collection of buildings with some older gems thrown in. I know there's construction here, but the street landscaping certainly leaves a lot to be desired. And there's the old Primrose Hotel. That's now serving as a student residence for the university formerly known as Ryerson. Yeah, it looks like a big condo is going into this location and they probably had to preserve the facade of this building. Almost have to wonder what's the point. I get not knocking down history. That's not particularly good looking. Maybe it has some significant historical, I guess, history behind it. That's a good way to word that. And we are at Carlton Street. There's a 506 Carlton Streetcar. Maple Leaf Gardens is just off in the distance there. And that streetcar will be going all the way to the main station or Main Street Station. They've got it down to just one lane of traffic in either direction. Looks like they'll be resurfacing the side of the street. That seems to be badly needed. These roads are bad news if you're on an e-scooter. Way back when, this area would have previously been referred to as Uptown. I think this facility, at least the one on the right here, no, it's all connected, serves the National Ballet. And 
this building dates back to 1856. There it is, Canada's National Ballet School. And that house there is quite nice. And I had a friend who lived in this apartment building here for a period of time. And I don't think he has very fond memories of it. He lived in a bachelor unit that went down the north side there. He didn't have much in the way of natural sunlight. I'm going to cross over to the east side. There's the Blake House restaurant and pub. And the Blake House itself was built in the 1890s. That's when a lot of this area was built up. Here's Maitland Street. And it's the old Jarvis Collegiate on the right. And that was founded back in 1807, at least according to that heritage plaque I just glanced at. And this is Wellesley Street West coming up. And in a moment, I'll be walking past the Keg Mansion. There it is. This building dates back to 1868, I think. And the keg is a chain of steak restaurants. It's actually pretty good. And I think this is their flagship location. If you're craving a not so expensive steak and you're in Toronto, I definitely recommend a trip to the mansion. There are rumors that it's haunted. And at one point, that was owned by someone in the Massey family. As was this property here, it looks like. There's the Jarvis Mansion events venue. 
the new Jarvis Mansion events venue. That was the Berkeley Bicycle Club before. And I think that went under during the pandemic, so it's good to see that particular property bounce back. Way back in the 1800s, this was kind of an upper class area, as you can probably tell by the style of homes here. There's the Princess Margaret Cancer Center Lodge on the right. And we are at Earl Place on the right and Gloucester Street on the left. And there's some neat traffic calming on Earl Place here. You can only go as far as a block to the east. And that prevents through traffic. And that's a design that needs to be implemented in a lot of suburbs instead of just meandering cul-de-sacs. So normally that reversible center lane would be in effect between Queen and I think Isabella. But because of this construction, we only got to see it in operation for the south end of, this, of the portion where it would normally run through. And this is Isabella Street. I'll cross over here back to the west side. I'll try not to get run over by an ice cream truck. Already had one driver try to run me over on this one. There is the evil empire itself. That's the headquarters of Rogers Communications. I am currently paying them for my home internet, 123 Canadian dollars plus tax for a thousand down and 30 up. But earlier today, I secured fiber service, so I'll be switching to 1500 down and 940 up. And instead of 123 dollars, I'll be paying 49 a month. There's no modem rental or installation fees. So I'm quite looking forward to getting rid of Rogers. They're the ones who famously had that all day internet outage. That was a few weeks ago. And I think when I cancel, I'm gonna give them that as the reason. Although, truthfully, that would have changed anyways. It takes me about two hours to upload one of my videos. With the 30 up, and when I switch, that'll be down to the single digit minutes. So I'm quite looking forward to that. I'll be able to get some footage up in a much timelier fashion. And this is Charles Street East. And just north of here, Jarvis Street ends. It was renamed Ted Rogers Way back in 2009. And branching off to the right there is the south end of Mount Pleasant Road. And you can take that all the way up to Midtown. There's someone not having a good day straight ahead. I hope that's not me they're yelling at. Leave me alone. Oh. 
And we'll just take this chance to look south down Jarvis. I think this person's paranoid. They're just screaming to leave them alone. Now they're digging through a trash can. Keep moving here. There's a subway. I could go for a sandwich for dinner. And here we are at Blur Street East in what used to be the north end of Jarvis. Named Ted Rogers Way after that horrible company across the street. So I'm just going to head west along the south side of Bloor here over to Bloor Young Station. the old manufacturer's life building. And I'm about 20 minutes too late to get my free transfer back onto the subway. So it'll cost me another 320. If I really time things right, I can get on the transit, record two videos, and get back on all in the initial two hour window. Well, I've had no such luck today. And this is Church Street coming up. just a few minutes from Blue Young Station. And this might be the most pleasant stretch of Bloor Street to walk across. Yeah, 
Ja, mam omajki. Certainly nice and cool. I could pop in here and jump in the subway, but I think I'll head around to the Hayden Street entrance. The busiest entrance would be right over there. And Glorion serves line one and line two. And it looks like the Ukrainian supporters are back to this intersection. They were here daily for months, and I didn't see them over the past week. It looks like they're back. And this is south on Young Street. So I'm gonna turn left at Hayden just up ahead here. There's an e-bike. Seeing more of those lately in the rental racks. It's a 97 bus. I could hop on that and take that up to Midtown. This is the quietest entrance into the subway station. And I'm just going to be heading down to the line one platform. How do people go around corners on the far left? How have you not smacked into enough people by now that you would no longer do that? All right, and I hope you enjoyed this one heading north up Jarvis Street from the St. Lawrence Market up to Bloor Street East and then walking west along Bloor Street over to Bloor Young Station. <laughs> Looks like the next train is in a minute. And let me know your thoughts and comments down below. If you wish to support the channel, there are links to my Patreon and YouTube channel membership in the description. And I have an Instagram account at Johnny Strides. And there's now a super thanks button appearing below these videos.
All right, thank you for watching, and I will catch you on the next one. Please stand clear of the doors.